Hey there, guys, it's Brian D. Anderson, your mysterious bard of mayhem and magic. Uh, blazing a magical trail on the mighty puck for all others to follow, bringing magic to the masses. I am going to give you a tour of my hometown, the magical Fairhope, Alabama. Ah, I love my little town. And being that this is my first video trying thing, anything with the GoPro, we're going to see how this goes. And, uh, we're going to... Oh, no, I ain't going to use that pun. Holy shit, that's too bad. But anyway, ho hopefully this will turn out good and be the first of many because I plan on doing this all the way to Richmond, Virginia and back. And away we go. Now this is my little street that I live on. This is, I'm not gonna tell you the name of the street. <laughs> this is a, a place called Montrose. It's not really Fair Hope. It's, um, Montrose is this kind of no man's land between Daphne, Alabama and Fair Hope, Alabama. And as you can see, it's very wooded and very, very pretty. Um, it's uh, the county doesn't claim it and the cities don't claim it and yet they claim it all at the same time because everybody wants to tax revenue but nobody wants to come in like work on anything and uh, believe it or not the residents are completely cool with that because they don't want the county and cities coming in and messing with anything and rezoning stuff so every time anybody tries to build a business in Montrose people lose their fucking minds The bridge over there that we're passing right now, I actually, actually back when my legs worked properly, I uh, used to walk all the way down, uh, all the way down to there and back to my house to get some exercise. Because when you write for a living, it's really difficult to get exercise. But I love riding. This is called Scenic 98. And I love riding down this road. It's a beautiful area. Now what we're seeing right here is um, I'm starting to get into the main part of Fairhope. Now. Um, we haven't quite gotten to downtown yet, but we will in just a minute. Um, these, all these apartments that you're seeing here on the left, those are pretty new. But everything else is pre uh, is more or less the same as it was when I, as I was growing up. Now I'm not going. To, uh, there's areas of Fairhope that I'm not. I didn't go today, um, with mainly because it's not very interesting. It's just supermarkets and um, convenience stores and you know shit like that. But the, the downtown, as you're about to see, is just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous This little restaurant right up here on the left, uh, Ben's. It was uh, man, it was been around since I was before I was born, and it only recently closed down. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good barbecue there. Now, coming up here on the left again is Fairhope Elementary School, but it used to be, uh, this is where I went to high school. It used to be Fairhope High School. And there it is. Uh, where I used to skip, and right up there on that hill that you, uh, that you can see, um, on the corner of the street is where we used to go uh, smoke cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, we were a bunch of rowdies. Now we're getting into the meat of downtown Fairhope. Um, it's kind of the, the outskirts of the downtown area, but as you can see, it has a you know really nice um, hotel right there on the right. Um, all the all what you're seeing here, uh, what you're what we're passing, all these are like antique shops and dress shops and shoe stores and um, all sorts of neat things that you know if you if you're into shopping or you know somebody who is. 
as you can see Fairhope Pharmacy I don't even think it has an actual pharmacy there anymore but it, you can buy all sorts of neat stuff and um, as you can see it's like what if Mayberry had a kid with San Francisco now there's a lot more traffic than there used to be a lot of people have been moving in over the past 10 years and but unfortunately if you want to keep the quaintness of the downtown you, uh, you know you have to make do you have to you know, you know um, tolerate a little bit of traffic because you know otherwise you got to tear shit down and widen the streets At this point, I had pretty much hit the outskirts of the downtown area, sort of bordered by that um, really pretty park. As you can see, people do not know how to pull out the traffic, but that's all right. I'm nimble. The mighty Puck is nimble. I haven't decided if Puck's a he or she, but for right now, he is able to traverse and escape from the idiot morons that plague our streets and highways. We're back entering back into the main downtown area and about to, so as you can see, I have to weave my way around here. And one of the best things they did was turn that into a one-way street. Okay, that was the downtown area. I'm going to show you the pier in just a minute. This right here is our local bookstore. It's called the Page and Pallet. It actually has motorcycle parking. As you can see that some jerk off uh, decided they needed the motorcycle parking instead of the actual motorcycles. But, you know, can't help there being jerk offs. Anyway, I'm going to see if they'll let me record inside. I were very kind to let me um, video their store. I'm not going to show anybody, any of the, any of the people shopping or anything. But it can, it'll give you a kind of an idea of who is here or what they have to offer. They got some really neat doodads. Things you can't really get. And I see all sorts of books and stuff. Nice gift cards and towels. Over here is a, a tavern, believe it or not. They have a bar. I'm trying to be very careful not to show any of the patrons, but. <laughs> More books. Nice little section back here. Page and Pound has been around since the early 1970s. It's, um, I actually have some ties to the store. Uh, uh, Betty Jo Wolf, who originally owned the store, is the mother of uh, my stepmother. And uh, she passed away years ago, she, but she was a super sweet lady. And um, <clears throat> this is a wonderful store has all sorts of fantasy young adult mysteries and lot, lots and lots and lots of litfic. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that. All sorts of cool little tables outside. Got the coffee bar. More little tables outside to hang out. And the person who was parked in the motorcycle parking lot left. That was good. Kind of grateful I didn't run into him. I probably wouldn't have been a very nice man. Cross street at a wine bar and a bunch of wine. Like an artsy little town. And there's even a loft upstairs. I, th I think people, some people rent that out. I 
I could literally spend hours going from store to store to store, um, days even, in this little town. Um, all the little places you're seeing is like sunglass huts and little restaurants and ice cream parlors. You know, there's just so much to discover in Fairhope. And um, one of my biggest fears is that, you know, it, it, that it keeps developing and loses its charm. And I mean, believe it or not, I mean, as, as teeny tiny as this may seem to somebody who like lives in a large city, this is a, uh, has grown up quite a bit. Um, as far as population goes because you know there's, Fairhope has a lot of land a lot of area outside of this downtown area that you just saw but everybody wants to live near downtown and unfortunately everybody can't live downtown now right here we are approaching the Fairhope Pier now this is an area that if you read my book Talos that I, I described Fairhope a little bit and hopefully you know I did it some justice but where where uh the main character encounters uh, one of the first, you know, one of the clones that he has uh, has to um, contend with, and where they, where I have the sort of remnants of society living at the end of the pier that you see off in the distance. What we're coming up on right here is just an area for people to have picnics and just relax and hang out. Normally, you either have to pay for parking if you're not from Fairhope, or if you're from Fairhope, they'll give you a little sticker and you can put it in your windshield and you can just park for free. But um, during 4th of July, this is just, this whole place is just packed with people. As you can see, they put up you know, little playgrounds for children and places to put your food and eat. Um, it's a nice little area. Fun fact: the little white bridge that we're gonna, that you're gonna see coming up on your left, that is where I got married the first time, right at the end of that bridge. And as pretty as it is, we didn't do it there because it was pretty, because it was free.
and that is one of the really fun places to hang out in Fairhope if you like to relax. Now um, we're going around this little area where you can get a better look at the bay and uh, which overlooks, you know, if you go directly across is uh, Mobile, Alabama, but we're not going to go there. And there's the pier and at the center of the pier um, there's a restaurant and you can go eat some really great seafood or you can bring your fishing pole out. Uh, catch or, or, or nets, catch some mullet. I've seen people catch sharks off the end of that pier. Um, but that is, um, you know, more or less the, the, the quaint little parts of Fairhope. Okay, and that's, that's a tour of Fairhope. Now I have stopped off at my local pub and uh it may be a shithole but it's my shithole anyway that was it uh i hope you enjoyed the little ride through fairhope i always enjoy being on a bike even on a shitty day like today you know what rather be on two wheels anytime i can i figure i'd give it one more shot i'm inside my place i am I'm not going to show anybody it's, that's rude to because I wouldn't ask permission, but this is my little local bar that I'm in Strix, right outside here. <laughs> it's where I spend the majority of my time when I'm here, and in just a minute I'll be spending some more of that time, the, the glamorous life of a writer I know. Anyway, until next time. <laughs>